noble thoughts brought us here to this region. But through it all, we have risen above. Through our flooding nights, flashing the willow and leather, these keepers of the flame must feel our undying love. Yes, yeah, so we're continuing with updates now from the Caribbean Cricket Conference being staged at the Hyatt in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, under the auspices of the TNT Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley. Let's now turn our attention to day two, where one of the main points was on youth and school programs to foster the development of cricket in the region. Cricket West Indies Committee member, Professor Joel Warrican and Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, shared their thoughts on the matter. Nobody, very few of the youngsters know much about the legends. And that is, that is really a shame. And I think what we need to do is to look at these things in an actionable way. How can we address that? So you have to attack it at the primary level. How can this be done? In our school system and in the US and so forth, there's something called a basal reader um, approach, where every child is exposed to this basal reader. The US has it much more sophisticated. In the US, it's that reader, but along with it is what you call trade books. I am saying that the West Indies board can lobby with CARICOM because ministries do not write texts, and, but what you want is the adoption of texts. So the West Indies cricket board can work with publishers, work with CARICOM to come up with a set of trade books that will populate the school. So if you have 30, 50 books about cricket, the history of cricket, the great people who have played the game, the iconic grounds like, um, like Queen's Park and so forth. Getting CXC to include history of West Indies cricket as part of the syllabus is too easy. And at the end of the day, if I'm doing English literature, where am I not reading beyond the boundary? If I am doing mathematics, where am I not using precepts and principles and content that is brought from West Indies cricket. With respect to the primary schools, um, Joel made the point, we have a reasonably strong primary school program. We have the Herman Griffith tournament. It was disrupted during COVID and the clubs were disrupted. And I think that I've gotten a greater sensitivity. Last year's budget, we put a million dollars for all clubs, not just cricket, because we understood that the clubs needed support because they had no revenue coming in for two, three years because of COVID. I'm leaving this meeting with even a greater sensitivity to things and interventions that we have to make to further expand the base drill in the primary school system. The cost of gear is ridiculous. And I said to Johnny Gray, why aren't we pooling procurement to be able to reduce the individual cost of gear across the region because tell me how many households can afford 500 US dollars in gear. Can't work. And therefore, I'm certainly going to use the Arts and Sports Promotion Fund in Barbados. I've told the BCA secretary that please let us get a proposal to make sure that those who really are interested, that we are there for them. Yeah, Mia Motley and Joel Warrican there. Meanwhile, the West Indies white pole coach, Darren Sammy, feels that the lack of star quality currently in the region is also affecting the sport. We had heroes, and I wanted to be like Brian. I wanted to, to come out and, and meet Kirtley Ambrose. At this present moment, to inspire the young generation, what are they seeing, who are the heroes? When was the last time you heard a, a, a young West Indian saying, I want to be like this person? They're, you hear the Virat Kohli's, you'll hear all of this. But because of the, the lack of, of, of heroes they see on TV, the spot now is kind of dying. And that's why this, the school system, the club, is very important. You know, finding an avenue where the parents are at work, the children are at school. When they come from school, the parents are tired, you put them in a club structure. They're practicing, they're harnessing their skills, and most of all, they're having fun. They're developing a passion for, for the game. 
Yeah, lots of food for thought there. Um, Faz, let me um, return with a discussion with you and start by, well, Darren Sammy, since we just heard him. Your thoughts on those comments there from the former West Indies captain, now White Ball coach? Yes, and a uh, two-time championship winning captain, of course, in uh, the, the, the World T20. But yes. if we're talking about absence of star power, I, I don't think that's accurate in West Indies cricket. I mean, you've got Nicholas Puran, you've got all, all the big names now in the IPL. Yes, yes Faz, uh, but, so, to, yes, but to, to be fair to his comment, though, the, he did make the point that if you talk to some of our youngsters now and ask them who are their favorite cricketers, they're going to tell you Virat Kohli and, and, and those names, not a West Indian. So I think that is the point that he was, he was making. Not that there aren't, you know, good West Indies players that people are trying to emulate, but he's, the, the real superstars, um, he, he's suggesting that a lot of our younger players now are looking at the Virat Kohlis of this world and not, not our own players. And whose fault is that, Lance? Well, you know, the fact is that have we done our part, and let's start with Cricket West Indies again, has Cricket West Indies, even as we're talking about our education system and our various Caribbean territories, I first learned of Sir Frank Worrell reading a comic book written by an educator from Trinidad and Tobago. I first learned of the great George Headley reading a series of books, booklets, to, to understand his greatness while I was still at primary school. So if we're really talking about awareness in the modern era, and we know it can't be books anymore, it has to be on your tablet, has to be on TikTok, has to be on Instagram, has to be on all of these different platforms. Where is the effort to get that done? And, and, and this, is, this is the point, getting to your specific point about why the, we, our young players are more aware, why there are so many young cricketers who come into our coaching uh, environment with the first name Sachin and not Brian. It's, it's because, again, of that hyper exposure of Indian cricket, of Australian cricket, of English cricket. What has Cricket West Indies done? And by extension, what have the territorial boards done? And by extension, further extension, our education system done to really present our own history, our own now, for the benefit of the youngsters who have to consume it in a way that we could reach them. Having said that, your thoughts on the comments Joel Warrican had made just before we went on to Mia Motley and then Darren Sammy. I, I heard what he said, but, but we've heard these things before. The, the point is, yes, if you do it, if you put all these things in the schools, the point is that you can't be selective with it, Lance. And yes, education, edu ministries of education don't write the, 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 the books and so on, but they approve them. And this is the thing. Ministries of education are run by politicians. Politicians like West Indies politicians see no further than the next election. And therefore, histories on recounting of incidents that are unpalatable to either the nation or to themselves or their political party will be expunged from our Caribbean history. So, the, the, the whole thing about, you might say, well, okay, what, what harm could be done in presenting a, the history of Western cricket? Maybe no harm, but if you do it, the labor movement will say, well, okay, what's this about? Just cricket alone? What about the Butler riots? What about the coup attempt? What about the, the revolution of 1970? What about so-and-so uprising? And we can talk about other parts of the world, the Enmore riots. We could talk about the Jamaica, the Barbadian experience. The fact of the matter is that cricket, the absence of cricket in our curriculum is merely a microcosm of a chronic failure of our Caribbean politicians who are fearful of recounting our own history because, again, they see no further than the next election. Yeah, and elections, of course, always affect. Even when FAS says, like, our new administration starts a plan, then somebody else comes in and, of course, discards of that plan, and then we start all over again. But my question to you, um, as we, you know, try to wrap up this discussion, is how important do you think um, forums like what took place at the Hyatt Regency in Trinidad and Tobago over the past two days are for, of course, the development of West Indies cricket? To cut a long story short, it will be two days wasted if it doesn't amount to fundamental change. Because just to give you a very, very quick analogy, you know you're from Trinidad and Tobago, so you know about pillow. So it's what went on over the last two days was like cutting up all the vegetables, yeah. getting the rice ready, getting the chicken ready, or whatever else you want ready. 
And then, now that you've had all the ingredients laid out beautifully, you realize you have no gas for the stove. Or it's an electric stove and there's, there's no electricity. So you can't do anything. And that is where we are. It's all well and good to present all these ingredients. But if Cricket West Indies, as the stove, is disinterested in entertaining that, that new recipe to transform West Indies cricket, well, it'll just remain ingredients. Faz, when we started the discussion before the first break, you were very um, insistent on the governance reform issue because you have said that you think that that is at the heart of, of the problem. About 13 or 14 years ago, Cricket Australia decided on a serious governance reform and they brought down their board of directors from about 15 or 16 people to like eight or nine because they saw that as a move that would centralize a lot of the the functionalities of the board and 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 reduce the po politics of the of how a board operates why would a, a country like australia be making a decision like that and the west indies uh, cricket administrators appear unable to do that and australia are world beaters in cricket so to be honest with you we could say that they have the template for success couple of things there very quickly you know what was the impetus for that transformation when they lost the ashes 2010 2011 yes. losing three test matches by an innings to the old enemy that was the trigger because australians don't fool around australia are about winning and, and, and again, you know, from, from our Western Indian experience, we look upon them as saying winning by any cost. But, but that's another point. The real challenge for us in the Caribbean, Australia is one nation. They may have their own parochial things as far as their states, Western Australia, Tasmania. They don't like how they're treated by the Eastern states, South Australia likewise, and so on. But you're talking about Caribbean territories, sovereign states, as Dr. Rowley mentioned towards the end of his contribution. You're talking about all oh, the tin gods and soda Caesars who want to ensure that you recognize me as this tin god and this soda Caesar before we do anything else. So the two representatives per territory, they are going to go into these meetings pretending to be interested in the wider welfare of Western cricket, but only interested in their own narrow area of interest. And that is where the challenge comes in line, because they, even if they acknowledge what happened in Australia, even if they acknowledge what happened with the ECB or what has happened elsewhere or, or transformations that would have taken place elsewhere, they lack the vision. They lack the selflessness to say, maybe it's the best thing if we were to step aside in the interest of West Indies cricket. Somebody said, who does that? Who does that? Who is willing to step aside in the greater interest of the common good? And that reinforces why we don't have real leadership in the Caribbean. Yeah, I understand the point you're making. And I do agree with you, Faz, that the issue of the West Indies being broken up in territories would make things more difficult for our structural advancement. But to the point that you just made, and you hinted at it just now, when the Australians were making their move, the different states had issues as well, because they do you know, recognize that if, if they give up, as you said, a Western Australia or one of the other states may, may have a problem as well, but they were willing to look past that for the greater good of Australian cricket. Absolutely, because they see Australia first. I don't think many of our so-called directors and, 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 and leaders and so on see West Indies first. They see Trinidad and Tobago first, Guyana first. Guyana has an issue with as ambassador as Cricket West Indies president, they have a legal matter that, that's ongoing. You, or they have Barbados first, Leeward Islands first, and even within the smaller territories, they, there's the, the pulling and the wrangling and goes on. In Australia, even if they have a gross in Western Australia about uh, how they are treated, it's still the baggy green first. First, second, and third. And we could fight over everything else afterwards. That does not prevail in West Indies cricket. Very serious comments there, Faz. Always great talking cricket with you and uh, life in general because you are you are you're of that you're, you're of that of that level, Faz, where we respect your views and so on. But um, it it really is a critical issue, and as you correctly pointed out, an issue that we have been battling for decades. And it's a it's a little bit frustrating that we we are hardly making any progress with it. But let's hope this this pillow 
will get the electric stove or, or the gas burning and something will happen fast. I have the gas tank ready whenever there is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir, we, we'll be back with more on the Sports Mat Zone after this. A sunbeam cutting through a clouded pass. A passion fills the world like a raging fire. As the sun rises, no, we can take it higher. Let every voice be raised. 